Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, share and like. Thank you for my existing subscribers, for your support, your love, your um, you've got my back, all those kind of things. Really appreciate it. Now today's topic is based on an article I read in the newspaper and it was talking about um, white people saying that they do not want to be treated by black doctors. That's basically what they're saying, whether they're black, Asian or whatever. They don't want a non-white doctor. And the NHS is saying they've got zero tolerance against racism. Now, you have to ask yourself, if you're in a hospital and um, you don't feel comfortable with the person who is um, treating you, are you allowed to say, I don't want that person to treat you, especially if it makes you feel uncomfortable. So, I mean, some people, it could make, they could feel so stressed about somebody of colour touching them, almost like they've got the lurgy, that it makes them feel quite distressed. Do they have a point? It's like when Muslim women, they don't want men treating them. They would feel very stressed if a man tried to touch them who wasn't in their family or who, you know, they didn't know. They would prefer a female. Similarly, um, a woman who's been sexually abused. If she's been sexually abused, it's very unlikely she's going to want to be, have, uh, have an internal done by a man. So you have different reasons why um, people reject certain health providers or health carers or clinicians and what the argument is is that if the person is black it is racism and they're saying it's white privilege if a person demands to be treated by a white person because they expect anything you know they expect their world to be white so what is the answer I mean, I was just thinking, when you go into hospital, well, I don't really know because a lot of the doctors are Asian now because there's such a shortage of nurses. But I mean, as black people, would you, would you feel uncomfortable if a white person was treating you given your history of slavery and racism? So if you had a white doctor... How would you feel about him treating you? Would you feel as though he's going to treat you less because you're black? I know in America they do. I know in America they feel as though they're receiving substandard treatment when they're black and their um, providers are white. So I took it out of the newspaper and I thought I would talk about it and just play around with the idea a little bit about whether or not it was valid. And I'll just read a little bit about what the health provider is saying and actually i'm going to start it off with what jo um, martin luther king jr said martin luther king jr says people fail to get along because they fear each other they fear each other because they don't know each other they don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other and those are the words of martin luther king and it is it's about ignorance it's about not getting to know the person. I know I've worked in places where um, they've been racist and they don't like black person but you know they get to know me and they're absolutely fine. I might be one of those few token blacks that they'll actually talk to. But I remember where I used to live. Oh this bloody phone, what's wrong with it? Hold on one sec, I don't know why this happens every single time. It's almost like they know I'm doing a video and just decide, okay, let's disturb, let's disturb her now. And even though I switch it off, it still makes silly little noises. So once again, I can only apologise. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I used to work, I when I bought my house, well, not the one I'm in now, but the house I was in before. It was on an all-white street. And the next-door neighbour, he was a right little ruffian. And I remember him saying, we don't want no niggers living round here. We don't want no effing niggers round here. 
And he goes, I'm going to get me pit bulls on you. I'm going to get me pit bulls. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then he said to me, oh, I'm going to sound you out. Oh, I'm going to be playing my music so effing loud. You're not going to be able to sleep. I said, well, that's fine. I said, you know. I said, I said I'm a DJ. We can have a sound clash. He was playing his whatever music he was playing, some kind of rock music. And I was playing my reggae. You don't need to say who won. <laughs> Boom! The reggae won. But yeah. But the, my point is, is that maybe, I don't know how long it took, five or six years down the road, best buddies. So it comes out of fear. I don't even know how we got to talk. I don't know if he needed something or what it was. I know I couldn't have needed nothing from him because I wouldn't have dared to go over there. But I don't know what it was why he came and spoke to me. But he came and spoke to me and must have wanted something. And then in talking, we got talking. And the next thing you know, he's empty. You know, he's putting me bins out if I go on holiday. You know, he's asking me if I need anything. You know, if, if, if he, if I wanted something done, he would come over and do it for me or his son would. Yeah, he was fine. But that's what I mean. It's exactly what Martin Luther King said. You know, if you don't communicate with people... You're going to be afraid of them. You're not going to get to know them. And you're going to think they're some kind of alien or something. So similarly, with these people who um, don't feel comfortable with black doctors, I'm not saying that they have to feel comfortable with them, but it's obviously because they put up a block and they don't want to get to know anybody. They don't even want to get to know them. They don't want them to touch them. They don't want to be anywhere near them. And what the NA, what the, well, not necessarily the NHS, but what the health service is saying is that they cannot tolerate that. If you, you know, because these clinicians are qualified. So if you can't accept this um, clinician, you're going to have to leave and get your, your health elsewhere. The only way they don't do that or listen to um, the patient is if it's an emergency and then the, the patient hasn't got a say anyway. But it is quite interesting, the dynamics. And this is quite recent when you're thinking about in this day and age, you've got people saying, look, I don't want a black doctor. I don't want an Asian doctor. I don't want anybody, to, I don't want anybody treating me who's got dark skin. And it might be immoral, but they do have a right. The only thing is, is that they might not get the service at that particular hospital or that particular health health centre. So, I don't know what your views are on that, but um, last week, this is came out today. <clears throat> so last week, a senior surgeon who has worked in the NHS for more than 20 years told, told how a patient had asked him, can I have a white doctor? I don't know what national... Oh, he was Asian, that guy. I think he was from Sri Lanka. Um, Dr. Radha Krishna Shanbag. No, that is not Sri Lanka. I'm not quite sure where that is. Um, said he had been left to feel worthless as a result of the way he was treated by patients. So, they claim that as long as they're not preventing a health professional from working in an establishment, they should have the right of choice. So what some of these people who don't want um, a black doctor or an Asian doctor, of a person of colour, let's say, to cover all the gamut, that, you know, they're not telling them they don't want them to work in the hospital, in the health centre. They just don't want them to touch them. But if there's a shortage of nurses and with doctors, we know that there is. There is a shortage of health professionals. And if the only ones who want to do the job are people of colour, what are you going to do? And it's not because um, they're taking over white people's jobs. It's because the white people don't want those jobs. Those, those white people are probably going... 
being private clinicians. And if you can afford a private clinician, you're well, you're welcome. And that's that's the joke. You know, because a lot of people who say they don't want uh, any black doctors or they don't want any doctors of colour can't even afford can't even afford to buy a bag of chips sometimes. You know, it's different if you're rich and you can go and pay privately for the type of doctor you want. And if that is your attitude, you go and pay for a private doctor. Then you can have any nationality that you want. But you can't go in a free service a relatively free service, and then try and choose what you want. You know, as when things are free, you take what you're given. Or you or you or you're on your bike. <sighs> Let me see what else is there for me to say. In a letter sent to all NHS staff yesterday, the health secretary said the government and management of the NHS would back up any workers who took a zero tolerance approach to racism. Patients choose a doctor of the same race because they feel greater comfort and trust with a, such a physician. They may distrust physicians of a different race or may be reacting to past experiences because that is true. I mean, well, to be honest, I've never really thought about it, personally. When I go to a doctor, I don't start thinking, oh, you know, they're white, they're Asian, they're black. I don't think like that. Just go in, I, you know, whatever I need done, I get done, and that's it, I'm out. I've got better things to think about. So, for somebody to go in there and actually think while they're ill because they wouldn't be there otherwise, and sick that they don't want, you know, somebody of colour to touch them. It's a bit, them got, they, they, they're so preoccupied with that, they're not even thinking about their illness or trying to get better. And what's, what's um, ironic is that this, the, the real racists and the slave masters, they all had black mammies delivering their children and looking after their kids. What's the difference? They never once said, oh, I don't want a black woman touching my baby because their white women would have to, their, their wives and whoever, their white privileged wives would have to do it for them. Or they didn't want their wives doing that kind of work. So they've got the black mammies to do it. Do you think they were saying, oh, no, I don't want any of these black mammies touching my white baby? No, they weren't. They didn't say that. They didn't think that way. Because the person was there to serve them. And as long as they, th where they were there to serve them, that was okay. It's when they were taking stuff from them, that's what they didn't like. So these doctors are in the hospital to serve and to provide a service. Anyway, not all requests from patients to be attended by another healthcare provider are necessarily due to invidious bigotry. Some are justified in asking for change of physicians, like I said before. For example, an observant Muslim female patient may not want to be touched by a male physician. Clinicians should advise patients that they cannot accommodate such a request to see a white doctor. Clinicians should try to persuade patients to accept treatment, assuring them that the available clinicians are qualified and capable of delivering quality care. And if patients insist on their discriminatory request, advise them of their right to seek care elsewhere. Going back into America now for parallel. More than one in five African Americans and one in three Hispanic Americans prefer a doctor of the same race or ethnicity. A new study shows for African Americans, this preference is strongly linked to believing that racism is inherent in the US healthcare system. And African-Americans who prefer black doctors are more likely to rate their doctor as excellent than those who want a black doctor but don't have one. However, the University of Washington researcher Frederick M. Shen, MD, MPH, found that for two thirds of black Americans and about half of Hispanic Americans, the race ethnicity of the doctor doesn't matter. So, UK healthcare doesn't discriminate. 
Recent studies show that racial and ethnic minorities in the US, however, continue to get worse health care than white patients. And he said he was troubled by the fact that some staff felt that need, they needed to accept this humiliation because they can't be sure that they will be backed up if they challenge it. Mr. Hancock, Hancock said he wanted to send a clear message to the staff and to senior managers in the NHS that such abuse will not be tolerated. This government takes a zero tolerance approach to dealing with racist abuse whenever it arises. Things should be no different in our NHS. If a patient asks to be treated by a white doctor, the answer is no. Your management must and will always back you up, he wrote. All doctors take an oath to treat all patients equally, and yet not all patients are treated equally well. Most physicians are not explicit racists and are committed to treating all patients equally. However, they operate in an inherent, inherently racist system. In addition, our own subconscious prejudices are called implicit bias, can affect the way we treat patients. A colleague of mine, Dr. Altaf Sadi, recently wrote about her experience treating patients at our own hospital. She has been questioned. She has been questioned insulted and even attacked by patients because she is a Muslim woman who wears a headscarf. To fight racism and discrimination, we all need to recognise, name and understand these attitudes and actions. We need to be open to identifying and controlling our own implicit biases. We need to be able to manage overt bigotry safely, learn from it and educate others. It is always amusing to hear from people, educated or not, who attempt to explain away the struggles of some minorities by insisting that everyone else is racist and discriminates against those who appear different. Some people are racist, some people discriminate against others, but just because it might be convenient to put a label on an entire group, of people it doesn't make it true or right so that's it for now let me have your comments bye bye